Hello, this is Myra Elaine on the Buying Space channel. I began the book of Exodus to complete the book of Exodus. I completed the book of Genesis in this Torah. As you can see, the Hebrew is on this side of the page, and then the English is on this side. Now, this is translated directly from the Hebrew, so this is not any version of the Bible other than the Torah translated directly from the Hebrew and Torahs are different anything that's in Hebrew you read from this side to this side and also when you um, progress when I get to the bottom of this page Instead of going this way, that takes me into the end of Genesis. So you have to turn the page this way. It's like a manga, which is Japanese uh, cartoons on print. Japanese cartoons in film is anime, but manga, when you buy in a book, you go this way. And the what looks like the back of the book is the front of the book, just the, like the same here. This is uh, an old Torah and it's been damaged. Let's see here it is Genesis. It's even got tape on it. My goodness. <clears throat> I'm, quite, I'm glad we're past that area where I had to be, um, you know, like hold the pages. <laughs> But um, the story of Genesis ended with Joseph, who is of the fame of the Coat of Many Colors story, if you all recall that. If you've been listening, you know who Joseph is. And Joseph became Israel. And Israel was sold into slavery by his brothers to the Egyptians. He traveled to e Egypt and he slowly worked his way up the rungs of Egyptian society, well, not too slowly actually, and became Pharaoh's right hand man. And his brothers came to him in a time of famine and he saved his own tribe. He saved the Hebrews from extinction, from starvation. and all the rest of the known world at the time too. But his family moved to the land of Goshen and they stayed there and Joseph then died. And then the Pharaoh that knew Joseph, that was fond of Joseph, who knew he'd saved them all, then he passed away and there was a new Pharaoh. And the new Pharaoh did not like the Hebrews. He was concerned about them. He was having to war all the time. And where Joseph and his family had left from, the Hittites had taken over that territory. And the Hittites and the Egyptians warred with each other. And the Hittites were a mighty force. They were just as strong and sophisticated as the Egyptians. And they want to battle with them. And this battle, I'll link a, a, put a link below about the battle between the Hittites and the Egyptians. The Hittites came in and won the battle. But they didn't take the territory. Much like when we uh, battled in Iraq. We won, but we didn't stay there. We let the native people go back to, you know, or maybe shouldn't say native because it's modern Iraq. We let the people in Iraq go back to what they were doing. Well, for some reason, and this was less typical back in these days, that the Egyptians and Hittites were battling, the Hittites just went home and didn't take over the territory that the Egyptians and the Hittites were battling over. And the Egyptians went home because they lost, because the losing side goes home either way. And in Egyptian hieroglyphics, 
they put that they won the battle. And they could do that because the Hittites didn't stay and claim the territory. They just beat the Egyptians. And I guess that's all they wanted to do <laughs> was beat the Egyptians to show that they were strong and mighty. But I think they had other things going on at home or they were battling other peoples. But I'll find a video about it. I'm not an expert on the uh, war between or wars between the Hittites and the Egyptians. But I know the, that uh, battle, and I know that Egypt at the time this was going on was concerned about their outside enemies, and they were concerned about the Hebrews because they were populating really well, and they were growing, and they were concerned that they might join up with one of their enemies, like the Hittites, and destroy them. Now, you might think, well, that's really paranoid, but that sort of thing happened uh, back when people, when countries fought over territories um, more often than they do now. It's still going on with Russia and the Ukraine um, and other places in the world, uh, but it was uh, more defined then because there wasn't nuclear warheads. There wasn't technology like we have today. Uh, you came in and whoever got slaughtered uh, lost. And the other party took over the territory. It was about the land grab. Um, today it's about the petrodollar and other things, political things. It's not necessarily taking over the land but controlling the people in the land today. We don't move. If we when we won in World War II, we didn't move a bunch of people to Germany. Um, I mean, we did have a military base there, but we didn't, like, move people there to live. And we didn't take people from Germany to come over here and serve us. Um, you know, that would have been absurd. So, uh, although we did hire some of their scientists. <clears throat> anyway, so as we talk about Exodus and the Egyptians... I want you to keep in mind that that's the type of era they were in, in history. And um, the Egyptians are an amazing people. Now, it is absolutely positively wrong to enslave anyone, but it doesn't discount the rich culture they had. Now, I'm not proposing in any way, shape, or form that anyone worship raw. Worship of someone is not necessarily study of someone. There are Christians that are Egyptologists, and they worship God. They don't worship Ra or Anan Ra or any other Egyptian deity, but they might have carvings of deities to preserve history. You know the phrase, it belongs in a museum. So we're not idolizing any Egyptian deities by having uh, statues of them. As long as we're worshiping Yahweh, we're fine. We don't have to be like ISIS. ISIS is an Islamic group that uh, terrorized the Middle East for quite some time, not that long ago. And one of the things they did was they went around destroying history. By, um, and they sold artifacts to um, foreign buyers for top dollar. And people paid it, even though it was illegal, to preserve that history, that item. Um, and they destroyed mainly Assyrian and other pre-Canaanite society uh, artifacts and sculptures because they believed that there should be no graven images and that only images to Yahweh and um, Allah should exist. So they destroyed a great deal of historical evidence of pre canaanite societies and that was highly unfortunate um, but that's what they did because 
they have an extreme view of graven images. We can keep statues and pictures and trinkets of what other civilizations worshipped as long as we're not worshipping them, as long as we have them in a museum, as long as we are worshipping Yahweh or our Lord or God or the Eternal, if you read uh, Elijah, that has the word for uh, God in the Torah, in the first and second Kings, Elijah calls God the Eternal. That's the translation in the Torah. And I just recently found that out for God. So we're fine as long as we're worshiping God. Now, if we start taking those statues and things and start bowing down to them and worshiping them or um, making sacrifices or offerings to them, we are then worshiping um, those gods. If uh, people these days, there are people now that worship Baal. For real. In our modern time, they worship Baal. And they worship Baal in the past. So if you have a statue of what the deity Baal was uh, back in the days of Jezebel, you're fine as long as you are keeping that as a museum piece, a piece of history, not something you're actively worshiping even though people worship that in the past. Now, would I make um, a new statue of Baal? No. But if I ran across an an, uh, antique or an ancient item that was already constructed, I would keep it. And I might donate it to a museum, but I certainly wouldn't destroy it. Uh, we are living in a day and age where people are not using common sense when it comes to things. If you don't want something in your space that, um, like tarot cards, certainly get rid of them. Uh, the only thing that I would burn right now would be a Ouija board. That I would burn. But everything else, I would send to Goodwill or to Vietnam Veterans or some other donation place and just get it out of my space. I don't want to contribute to the carbon footprint of our planet. I think our environment as a whole, in a planetary way, is more than important. If everybody took all those items out and burned them now, it would cause significant pollution. But... We need to, you know, give to the devil what is the devil's, uh, so to speak. Uh, If you keep highly cultural items from antiquity, from different pantheons, they have no power anymore. Some people are even saying the saints in the pantheon. In the Vatican, I believe it's in the Vatican, it's in Italy, certainly, are being possessed by demons. That the saints are demons with the Catholic Church. Now, I'm not Catholic. I love my Catholic friends, and I don't think they're demon worshipers. I don't think the Catholic Church as a whole is making any attempt to be evil. Now, do things happen uh, with churches that are evil? When they're meant to be good, absolutely. Things happen. Even today, discrimination happens. Uh, People gossip. Bad things can happen in churches. There can be sexual abuse of children. All sorts of bad things can happen in churches. Does that mean we need to quit trying? No. But you have to understand context in any given situation. So having a ball statue that's historical, that was already created, that you're not worshiping, that you're just keeping for educational purposes, for cultural purposes, I think you're fine. 
Now, if you have somebody come in that starts worshiping that thing, you need to put it away. <laughs> or you need to find a museum to donate it to if you have a family member that develops an issue because of it. So that um, is certainly a consideration. So you can have these things, but you have to be careful with them. If you have an old deck of tarot cards, I certainly would get them out of your house because that's a modern worship and practice thing. People don't know about Baal for the most part. There are, like I said, there are people actively worship him. Um, and there were people back in the days of the Hebrews that worshipped him. And some point in time, there were people in the tribes that worshipped other deities. They, there was a weird, strange phase that they accepted people that weren't worshippers of Yahweh. So I'm going to talk about the journey of the Hebrews from the time that they were beginning time that they were in Egypt. Well, we've already done that partly in Genesis because we talked about Joseph. But we are going to continue uh, to talk about what happened uh, to the Hebrews under Pharaoh after Joseph passed away and who came along that saved them from the Egyptian oppression and slavery. And for those of you that are Egyptian, whether you be in Egypt or anywhere else in the world, Egypt had slavery, period. There are motifs that exist in southern Egypt that show the slave master, the overseer, with the whip. It might have been called something else back then, but it was a whip. And slaves were killed. Slaves were put in walls. And that happened in China when they enslaved people and built the Great Wall of China. A lot of the large structures of antiquity, probably the majority of them, were built with overthrown people that were slaves. Now, the Hebrews were not overthrown. They moved there on their own, and things got progressively worse with the Egyptians because the Egyptians were scared of how fruitful the Hebrews were. And that was a very unfortunate turn, but it happened, and they were enslaved. And history shows that us that, and the Bible says that. But there's archaeological evidence outside of the Bible that proves Egyptians enslaved people. Now, there's not any direct evidence, from what I understand archaeologically was, that the Egyptians enslaved the Hebrews. But it says so in the Bible. And we have the Dead Sea Scrolls. These writings are ancient and they're repetitious throughout history back to the time of um, the enslavement. So um, the written word of all these scribes and witnesses is proof on its own. But there are people out there, of course, that want proof beyond the biblical narrative, beyond the Dead Sea Scrolls, beyond um, writing... Um, in stone if that stone ends up being part of the Bible <laughs> so I don't know how much time I want to spend on the archaeology uh, because I feel that you should have faith that this book is holy and came together as it should have um, if you're outside of that I invite you to accept God, Yahweh, as your Lord and Savior, and His Son, Jesus Christ, as your Savior. And uh, my email address is on my about page if you want to contact me. If you want to send me material to read or materials to objects to use, my name and my address are on my about page too. But we are going to start exploring Exodus 
coming up soon, and I want you all to enjoy it. I'm certainly looking forward to uh, talking about these events uh, that the Hebrews went through and their meanings. Uh, thank you, and have a wonderful and blessed day.